If you own a D-Link NAS that looks like this, or a router that looks like this, it might be only a matter of minutes before you get wrecked. If the wrong person knows your IP address and watches this video until the end, they'll have complete access to your network where they can steal all your data, launch a ransomware attack, or if you're lucky, just send a warning to your printer. The NAS has been hit by a critical 9.8 vulnerability, while the router has been hit by a separate buffer overflow bug, both of which can lead to remote code execution. And these back doors are not going to be fixed. But luckily, the company has offered a solution. Stop being poor, go to Circuit City, and buy yourself a new NAS or router. That may sound like a delinquent suggestion, but you see, these devices recently reached their end-of-life deadline, which means the manufacturer is off the hook and their bad code is your problem now. In today's video, we'll look at D-Link's unbelievable cluster fudge of vulnerabilities and learn how to exploit them ethically. It is November 26, 2024, and you're watching The Code Report. Planned obsolescence. Many corporations say it's not real, and if you accuse them of gaslighting, they'll say gaslighting's not real because you're just crazy. But planned obsolescence goes all the way back to the 1920s, when a bunch of light bulb companies got together to form a cartel to build bulbs that would burn out faster and make profits bigger. And modern tech companies love this grift, like the ink cartel, which will build ink cartridges that run out after they hit a print quota, even though they still have perfectly good ink. But the best way to make your product obsolete is to stop updating its software or firmware. Setting an end-of-life date for a product is perfectly reasonable, but even soulless companies like Microsoft have released emergency patches, like they did for Windows XP in 2017 for the WannaCry ransomware attack, even though support officially ended in 2014. And Cisco also patched end-of-life devices after the Log4 shell vulnerability. But D-Link devices have a massive list of security flaws, but don't expect a patch anytime soon or ever. Like this 9.8 allows anyone to change a user's password and affect 60,000 modems. And that's in addition to a path traversal vulnerability and a command injection vulnerability. There's also another 9.8 critical vulnerability affecting their network attached storage devices. And to understand how it works, we'll penetrate it together. Before we do that though, I want to make sure everyone has time to implement D-Link's fix, which is to go out and buy an entirely new device. They're offering a generous 20% discount, but these devices only reached end of life a few months ago, and there's really no accountability for what happens now. Before we look at the exploit, I want to make one thing crystal clear. Hacking is highly illegal, and you should only run these exploits if you have permission. In a recent video, I talked about how Andrew Tate was penetrated by a group of BLT hackers, and although hilarious, it's not cool or legal to access a server that's not yours and leak user data. If you're into hacking and pen testing, one of the best places to start is with Kali Linux, a Linux distro with all the tools you need built in. In this case, we're looking at the NAS exploit, which works by sending a git request to inject commands into the account manager.cgi endpoint. If you want to learn about D-Link's bad code, I would recommend watching Low Level Learning's video, but you don't actually need to know why the code is bad to exploit it. The first step is to find a target, or someone who is stupid enough to put their NAS on the internet. One of the most fundamental tools for pen testing is Nmap, which can scan a network and find all the devices connected to it, like your printer, refrigerator, smart lock, or your vulnerable network attached storage. You could use Nmap manually, but there's also public search engines like FOFA that allow you to search for public network assets. Like with this query, we now have a list of potential targets. The next and final step is to execute the exploit. There are tools like Metasploit that allow anyone to do this without any coding knowledge, but in this case I found a GitHub repo that implements it in Bash. It's only 100 lines of code, but the most important line of code is right here, which attempts to inject a command into this vulnerable endpoint. It takes a name parameter, and then percent %27 is UTF-8 for a single quote string. But instead of ignoring or sanitizing that string, D-Link's bad code will actually run it as a command on the OS by simply making a get request with curl to that endpoint, at which point it's game over for the victim because you now have a reverse shell on their machine. Pretty scary, but I think this was a savvy business move by D-Link. Not only did they not have to fix this bug, but they won't have to fix any future bugs because they won't have any customers left. But a much better strategy is to build products that customers actually love. And you can do that with a truly awesome open source tool called Posthog, the sponsor of today's video. It's like a Swiss army knife to analyze, test, observe, and deploy better features. Its product analytics tool can help you understand your customers and build funnels. Its web analytics can replace Google Analytics. And Session Replay will help you understand how users actually interact with your app. Not to mention feature flags and UI experiments like A-B testing, just to name a few of the features. But most importantly, it's easy to implement thanks to SDKs for web, mobile, and server-side apps, with excellent docs designed for developers. Not only is it open source and self-hostable, but also has a fully managed, no card required free plan. Give Posthog a try with the link below. And let me know if you want to see a full tutorial on Beyond Fireship. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.